Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're here, it's because you want to start teaching voice lessons and you're not exactly sure how to get started. You don't know what to say, you don't know what you're supposed to be listening for, and you don't know exactly how to help your students with their problems. In this lesson, I'm going to give you four key topics to address when you start teaching students. If this is something you're interested in hearing, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell so you're notified every time I post a video, which is every Tuesday. Before you can begin teaching voice lessons to students, you have to understand what your objectives are and what exercises to lead them through to get them to that objective. My main objectives are pitch perfection, the ability to match pitch or sing in tune, range extension and evenness of scale, which also includes addressing a student's break areas and where the voice transi transitions from one part of their range to another, the length of their phrase, and that comes right down to how efficiently they're managing the pressure in their thoracic cavity and the way that the air escapes through the vocal folds. And the fourth one is the increase in resonance or amplitude. And I find that that usually comes when you get them to balance their breath. There are so many things that compete for your attention when you start working with a new student. You can work on their diction, you can work on their posture, you can work on making their vibrato more consistent or existent. There are just so many things, but in this lesson we're only going to talk about those four because I think that until those four are in good measure, you don't want to really be messing around with anything else. Now let's start with the first one, which is perfecting your ability to sing in tune. Now some people can get real salty when you tell them they're not singing in tune, but let me tell you, if you're not singing in tune, your entire performance suffers. I don't care how balanced your breath is, I don't care how beautiful you look on stage, nobody will want to listen to you if you're not singing in tune. So we want to make sure that we have a good coordination between our mind and the muscles in the larynx, because if those aren't connected, then we get really clumsy about how we approach pitch. We're just not sure exactly where it's supposed to be placed, like a dance, like learning a new dance. And these things can be trained. So don't let the student get discouraged if they feel like they're not singing in tune or they can't quite hear it yet, they can't tell when they're not in tune. That's something you train. So first, point it out to them, make them aware of it. Every time it happens, they'll start to recognize over time the different places that that begins to happen and they can eventually correct it on their own and then as they start to approach a place you know is a typical break you want to point out how they can shift their technical approach maybe they need to sing a little lighter maybe you can use words like move the sound up into this part of the face experiment with a few things these might work they might not but you'll never know unless you experiment and then ultimately approach them about how much they're actually committing to supporting the sound. So often if I have somebody who's struggling with their pitch and they're also not very loud, I'll ask them out of 100%, 100% being the loudest noise they've ever made. Ooh, there's a truck going by. Okay. 100% being the loudest noise they've ever, ever made. Noise not even musical or singing, just noise. Ask them what percent they think they're singing at. If you get a young voice, it's typically gonna be in the 15 to 40 percent. And I want somebody singing at 60 to 85 to 90 percent all the time. Now, 100 percent, I don't want them to red zone. I don't think that's appropriate ever. You get an edge to the sound and a pressure that's just could be not helpful. So what we wanna aim for is that kind of 55, 60% to 85% of their 100% at all times. Now, that's gonna be different for a young voice than it is for me. My 65% may be well over someone else's 100%, just because we're different voices. So I want you to pay attention to that, make sure you're not expecting them to sound like you do. Your percentage scales are not the same. So if their pitch is suffering, I will often say, out of 100%, I want you to give me 70. I want you to give me 70% of your 100. And if you still feel like they could give you more, then I'll start with smaller intervals. So I'll say, okay, good, I feel like that was maybe 50%. Why don't you try by giving me 5 or 10% more than you're giving me right now? And then maybe we might go into some support exercises or get them to use their breath a little bit more than they're used to, because it's typical that they're not used to engaging that much as far as their voice is concerned. And that's okay. It's just something to get used to. If you have a kid who just cannot sing in tune to save their life, I want you to find one note. Ask them to pick it. Don't play it for them. And, and they'll probably find something in the mid range because it's easier. So if you, and ask them to sing it. 
and then find that note on the piano. So for example, if I were asking myself, Emily, you're terrible at singing in tune. Why don't you pick a note that's easy for you to sing, any note, and sing it for me on an ah. Uh. So I'd go, ah, uh, and I'll find it, E flat. And I would sing that note and ask them to raise their hand whenever they hear me going sharp or flat. So it would sound like this. Ah, and they'll usually raise their hand at that point. They can tell sharps really quickly. It's flats they struggle with. Ah, I usually have to get to that point before they actually raise their hand. So you start to train their ear to recognize when pitches are changing or fluctuating. Now getting the brain and the voice to connect, the muscles of the voice to connect because they are muscles, they do contract. So these things are working like muscles do, a shortening of the muscle to bring the chords together and maintain a certain posture depending on what range you're singing. So that connection is difficult, but you want to begin by asking them to identify when sharp or flat is happening. Next we're going to move on to range extension or evenness of scale. Now this one is fun because most kids can do this when you start and they're always blown away by how big their range actually is. So what I like to do to start with is ask if the student can squeak for me. It's something that's super non-committal. You can ask them to, it's not that loud, it's not embarrassing to do. <laughs> So I will ask them to squeak for me, or, or whine. Whine is a better word. Um, like a puppy whines. When you first get a puppy and they're sad to be away from you and you hear them go, that's the kind of whining I want them to do. And most young kids can do it, even boys, by the way. If they do struggle with it, then bring it down. Have them do it where it's comfortable for them. So don't try and force them to, otherwise they start to go like this and you get this kind of bowing in the neck. You don't want that either. So make sure that when you ask them to do it, if they're straining to get as high as you have gotten, well, first make sure you can do this exercise. If you're a voice teacher, chances are you have control over your facilities enough that you can make this happen. So if they're struggling, ask them to come down a little bit and you can model it for them. You can squeak quite far down in your range and it gives it the same sensation. So. I like to do that and then I like to have them go up the scale to see how high they can take this squeak. And it's just a simple way of getting them making noise. And then I'll take them into the next exercise which I'll show you but I have to change the position of the camera. Stand by! Okay, we're going to start out by having them buzz their lips. If this is something that they can't do, then I'll give you a hack for that. But for now we're just going to assume that they can buzz their lips, okay? So we're going to have them go... So we're going to do triads. I want you to put your hands in triads, okay? So I'm on C major, and we're going to do one, three, five, and just do the thumb of the next triad, okay? So we're going to go... So if you're not really good at scales right now, just practice going up half steps. Every single note moves a half step up. So we're not going to do scales right now. This is just a simple hack, easy way to get this done. Okay, so we'll have them go. If they find that successful, we'll move on to this next one, which is one, three, five, one, three, five. And then you go to four, two, and then go down a half step on one. And then you go f your thumb on the bottom hand. So we have, I love this one. So they're going to go. If this is just not happening for your students, they're just not finding success in buzzing their lips. Sometimes anatomically an underbite or an overbite can make this really difficult. So what I would have them do is stick their tongue out and see if that helps. So instead of going instead they'll do and it's just as effective. It's a little bit you get a lot more showering going on so I'll have them put up their spit screen I say. Just put your spit screen up 
if that's not working either, because sometimes I have students who, like you can tell that I vibrate on the bottom part of my tongue. And sometimes they do it on the top, just by the because of the way their teeth are shaped and their jaw is shaped, they can't do it efficiently like I can. So I'll have them fill up a Dixie cup. And you can see where I've put the where I've put the Sharpie pen. And I've just marked about the water line where I put it. It's like three quarters of an inch. You don't want to put a ton, but you want to have enough that you get create that resistance that you get with the Bernoulli effect, with that oscillation that takes place, you get pressure build up and then pressure release and pressure build up and pressure release. And this happens hundreds of times per second, depending on the pitch you're singing. So you want to try and um, simulate that uh, effectively. So I'll fill up a Dixie cup with about three quarters of an inch of water. And then I put one of these bendy straws. This seems to be the best thickness for my students. And I'll have them blow into the water and do the same exercise. Okay, so you want the it to be like a good boil, but you don't want it to be so ruckus that you're spitting all over the place. There will be a little bit of that, but as you go up, if the bubbling increases, I want them to minimize that as much as possible. I want them to feel the stretch and the lengthening of the vocal folds, not the increase in pressure. So keep your eye on that. You can listen for it when they do it as well. So if I start on a C, now, don't let them tip their head down like this because that's not effective either. So keep their head up. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is that a lot, oftentimes the young students, they'll skip pitches and they'll just do kind of the circular siren, which is not the point of the exercise. So you'll get, in, you'll get this sound. I don't want a circular siren like that. I don't want it to go. I want to hear those individual pitches. Which means they're going to have to learn to be articulate, but to not put extra pressure or emphasis on each note. You'll notice that when you get to the top of this exercise that students will start to either strain or they'll start to raise their larynx a little bit and it gets that kind of pressed, uh, overpressurized sound. And I'll tell them don't add extra pressure, just squeal up to the top. Don't try and force it to happen, just squeal. And if it's there, great. If it's not, fine. That's fine. It will come with time. We just have to start to balance the pressure. One way that helps them to relax into that, other than telling them to squeal or to squeak up into the top, is asking them to bend at the waist just before they get to the top. So when they do this exercise, yeah. I'll just have them do a little bend and I'll have them go further than that. Just as so, what is going on out there? This will help give them a physical feeling of connection because you are gently using your core as you bend over, you're having to assist the voice a little bit more than you're used to and that's especially helpful for young sopranos and young uh, singers in general. Okay, length of phrases. Now this is one of my favorite exercises to do and I love doing it with young kids because they get such a kick out of it. I will go and buy a bunch of blowouts. That's what these are called and since I've been around kids so much because I have a lot of siblings and they all have children, Blowout means something very different to me than a party toy. <laughs> blowout means, you know, poop. Like a diaper blowout. You get it. You get it. So I will order a bunch of these silicone, not the paper ones. The paper ones are absolute rubbish. The silicone ones provide more consistent resistance and they don't wear out because the heat of your breath can make the paper go soggy and then you don't get the same effect. So what I have them do is about ooh, three sets of 10 blowouts. This is a really great way to get them to access the feeling of their diaphragm going up and down, just flexing in general. So we start with 10. Now they're going to be a little clumsy at first because they're not used to using their diaphragm like this. Once you've done your three sets of 10, I like to move on to having the students hold with just a little bit of curl at the end of the blowout 
for intervals of 10 seconds, then I increase to 15, then we go to 20, then we go to 25, and as long as they can go. The lights went out for a second, I had to turn them back on. These are these motion lights, so if I don't keep moving super animatedly, they turn off. Ugh. Anyhow, we were talking about lengths of phrases. Now, when you look at an amateur singer, you want them to be able to hold for a phrase comfortably for at least six to eight seconds. So I would start with 10 seconds and have them hold it like this. Ten seconds later. And what they want to pay particular attention to is how much they fill up their lungs. And then you have to set that pressure. So you will blow out here, leaving a little bit of curl at the end. Like I said, you don't want to go all, you know, you don't want it to go to that point where you're actually getting air coming out the end. You want to keep a little bit of curl because that way you'll get the right resistance. But you need that flexibility. You need that like push back. And that doesn't happen when you just let the air escape without being monitored. And a lot of young kids do that. Heavens, I do it to a degree. My teachers will still say to me, no, Emily, you're going, <laughs> Maybe not those words. I love you, Daryl. Once you've finished those exercises, you can take that sensation and move it to a simple phrase like happy birthday or something that everybody knows. So if you want to start with happy birthday to you, start in a very easy, comfortable, middle range. Middle C for most people is just fine. Um, the C below for most men is just fine. So either start here or start middle C. Okay? So we get happy birthday to you. If they start to go happy birthday to you, give this back to them and make them hold it again. And then maybe have them take it out but maintain that feeling and go happy birthday to you. Now to start, they're going to be a little clumsy, so it might feel like they're holding their breath a little bit. That's not exactly what we're going for, but it is closer to the mark than going happy birthday to, right? So we're just trying to find that balance. And don't be afraid of swinging too far on either sides of the spectrum and help guide your student to discovering what works best for them. The very last point you want to pay attention to is, is how to help them increase their resonance or their amplitude, which just means loudness, really loud abilities. And for young voices, that can be really tricky. Their anatomy, the cartilage, isn't stable enough yet in their young lives. It hasn't stopped developing. So there's a lot of shifting, there's a lot of flux that can happen in a young voice. Things aren't as stable as they are as you get older. So you have to keep that in mind and allow for a little bit of variation from day to day. And a huge part of increasing resonance or amplitude comes in by way of vowel placement. And really, if you're a science nerd, it's just you're coupling your formants, or you are trying to make sure that they are complementing and amplifying. So you're literally manipulating the shape of the chambers in your mouth because they will respond differently to whatever frequency you send through. Because the chambers, the laryngopharynx, the oropharynx, the nasopharynx, they are all shaped differently depending on who you are. That's what makes it's the beauty of voice is that every single one is so unique because nobody's built exactly the same. It is the magic that is you. The next one I love to do for young voices is a she exercise because the sh again helps you build up your pressure without going huh, she, she, and then we have an E. So if they're struggling with their E's or they're too, uh, or they're too undefined or they're way too spread, have them say the word pizza. It's simple, it's not pizza. P, E, E, E. The lips are relaxed, but the tongue is in a very forward position. So you get pizza. And then you can have them sing she, sheetza, sheetza. And they'll say sheetza. And then you can say, okay, let's do the exercise, which is one, one, two, three, three, four, five, three, one. One, one, two, three, three, four, five, three, one. Okay, so you're gonna do she, e, e, o, o, o. And they put that E right, or they put the A right where the E was. Okay, so you don't get she, e, e, o, o, o. That's not what we're going for. She, e, e, o, o, o. Keep that soft palate high, but you wanna equalize those vowels so you get a, an equalizing of resonance as well. So the exercise is gonna go with a great suspended, excited space and support system instead of tension and push. We're gonna get she -e -e -o -o -o. she -e -e -o -o -o. Tell them to giggle through it. She -e -e -o -o -o. Now I'm not going she -e -e -o -o. 
Shio, shio. Now, when they start to go higher, they may start to get a little bit heavy in their production and it will slow down and you'll start to hear that. So encourage them to speed it back up. You have to energize that sound so it doesn't ever get stiff. Shio, shio. Now we've gotten to the point where they're gonna have to put more ah in their sound, okay? So have them put their finger under their lip and just get a little more of that ah. Help them be brave. It might be small and squeaky, but just encourage them all the way. Generally speaking, my female students ought to be able to sing. I can generally expect that they'll be able to sing from a middle C to an A6. Now an A6 is just below high C. That's two C's above middle C, okay? So when you start to guide them through these exercises and they start to struggle at an A, send them into that squealy place and try and get them to reduce the amount of th like shoving or pressure that they're sending up there because that's gonna restrict their ability to stretch those vocal folds. And I've never had a student that I can't get above a, a high C in perfect, beautiful, efficient vocal balance. So sometimes it just takes some time. If you have any more questions, apart from putting them in the comment section below, be sure to follow me on, on my other social medias where you can certainly reach out there and ask me those questions. These are my top tips for beginning to teach voice lessons. I hope it was helpful. Don't be afraid of experimenting. Be super curious and really, really kind to yourself. It's really important to stay positive in your mind. Again, thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please share it with your friends. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell so that you never miss a notification about when I post a new video. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs>